When we talk about depth and distance and shading in Adobe Illustrator, it's important to remember that there are a lot of observable phenomena in the real world that we can use to our advantage. And one of these observable phenomena is the fact that when you have something that's closer to you, it appears to get more light on it, and when it's further away, there's going to be greater fall off. Now that is not something that happens in the outside world when you are illuminated by the sun, but when you're inside a room and there's a particular light source, a single light source, this is fairly common. It's also common when things are on the interior side of things that there's just going to be shadows that fall on it. And what do I mean by that? Well, if there is a light source near us, the observer, and a person is standing three quarters to us, not only will they get the light source more on the pant leg that is closer to us, but there's also going to be a shadow that falls on the pant leg that is furthest from us. So in Illustrator, you can create a character, and I have one that's set at three quarters here. And you can duplicate elements. The way that you can duplicate, of course, is to either drag your element, your layer, to the new layer icon, or you can select that layer, controller command copy, then controller command paste, that is controller command C, or controller command V. And when you have this new element, you can place it on the far away position. So in the case of our guy, the far away position is on the other side of his body. Then I can do some color changes to indicate that this is further away. And the easiest way to do that is to go into the colors palette, so double click it here. With your object selected, you're just going to shift the color down slightly. And what we end up with is a darker iteration of the color that is in the element that's closest to us. So if it's an arm that's close, it's bright, and if it's an arm that's far away, it's dark, but they're roughly the same color. And by virtue of being darker, it separates the foreground from the background. So let's take a bush. Let's just go ahead and make it out of a few different circles. There's going to be some parts of the bush that are closer and some that are further away. And I want to show you what it looks like when elements of the bush are bright in the back. Now, it separates the foreground from the background, but it does feel a little bit odd. You can justify this if you have lighting that is intended to come from a source that's behind the bush. So instead of the lighting coming from the viewer, it comes from, say, a house that's in the distance. But this generally isn't the way we perceive the world, and it isn't a way that makes a lot of sense unless you have that other story element to it. If you are looking at this and you don't see anything else that's indicating where the light is coming from, you just assume it's coming from your position, you, the viewer. Now we're going to get into position fidelity, and what this means is that there is a certain field that will be in focus, and as you get out of this field, things will become less and less in focus. Photoshop has an option called Camera Lens Blur, which makes it pretty clear, but Illustrator doesn't have Camera Lens Blur. Instead, it has the Gaussian Blur, which works for our purposes. What you need to do is establish in your mind how close relative objects are together. So if my character is meant to be five feet away from this bush, and this bush is meant to be five to 10 feet away from something else, then I should start adding blurs to the background objects, but I need to blur them in increments. So let's say the bush is five feet away. I will go ahead and blur these objects using the Gaussian blur effect. Then the objects that are further away, they get an additional 30 pixels blur. Now this may look like too much or not enough depending on your speed. But as you can see, it really gives the impression that some things are closer than others. And if you have multiple layers of foreground and background, this is really fun to play with. And uh, you can also choose to blur a foreground element, so something that is closer than our guy to the camera, close enough that it would be out of focus if this was filmed in a real world scenario with a real camera. 
So I'm going to put some leaves in front of our guy as if we are lurking in a tree. And this is also going to get a bit of blur. In the same way that things shift blurriness depending on how close they are to your central camera, in the same way that things shift blurriness depending on where they are in relation to your central object, you can also play with stroke and saturation. Saturation is easy enough to change. You select your objects and then you shift the color palette like so. Altering the thickness of a stroke is easy to do. You select your objects, you have your stroke width here, and you just crank it down. So things that are further away are not as vibrant, and they don't have as defined an outline to them as things that are close to you. And of course in the real world, nothing has an outline around it. Uh, the people you conversate with do not have a strong black outline the way they would in the comic book. But in an illustration, they might. Now, a lot of my artwork doesn't have strokes to it. I kind of like the vector artwork look that is based around shading rather than outlines to define it. But if you do have outlines, I recommend having a thicker outline for things that are close to you and thinner outlines for things that are meant to be receding into the background. Similarly, I recommend desaturating the colors the further away they get from your central object. And not only does this have to do with the way things operate in the real world, where the colors are less distinct the further away they are, but if you have a central object in your composition, it's important that the eye of the viewer stays on that and sticks with it. Anything else in the background and all these other foreground elements, like the out-of-focus tree leaves, are really intended to just give atmosphere to our work. So I recommend laying down background objects, anything that isn't your central object. You always need that to pop against the background. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more creative tutorials, gear reviews and video art. Also check out our Patreon for weekly bonus videos and model photography sets.